The battery life on my Dyson V6 cordless vacuum cleaner has become kind of abysmal, not, not lasting as long as it, nearly as long as it used to, and especially if I put it into max mode, it only lasts for a few seconds and goes out. So I can't do the whole house anymore like I used to. So I needed to find a solution for replacing the battery. And you can easy, pretty easily remove the battery pack by taking out a screw here and pulling the battery pack out and replacing it with another battery pack. Now there's several options. There's Dyson original battery packs that are relatively expensive, you know, about half the cost. Of, like I think they're about $100 or some of that, basically half the cost that I can purchase the whole absolute vacuum cleaner set refurbished. Or there's other battery pack options from third parties, but the quality of those is kind of questionable. The battery life is questionable, like how many cycles of those batteries have compared to a Dyson battery. And also, do they have proper protection to keep them from overcharging or over discharging? Now, I was never crazy about the battery life of this vacuum cleaner from the very start. It always seemed like I could use a little bit more endurance with this, this pack and have it last longer so I could completely finish the job that I was trying to do. It oftentimes would run out like mid-vacuuming. Being that I wish there was always a bigger battery pack, I was able to find a third-party battery pack that didn't just claim higher capacity, it actually had twice as many cells, so it's twice as thick and therefore theoretically has twice the capacity, depending on how good the quality of the cells are. And that we will see in a longer runtime test and also a life cycle test of how long will the battery last being charged and discharged and used in a normal environment. So I'm going to demonstrate how long it lasts on max. So this is, this is going to be regular right now. And it would last long enough for me to do some vacuuming around the house. But if I turn on max to get that little bit extra suction that I need some, in some places, you'll see how long it's going to last. That's it. I don't even think that was a minute long. And then it's dead. And I can't even go back to regular mode after that, like once it's, once it's dead. So that's it. That's all I get from the max mode. Um, and max mode is, is very useful. If there's spots that are dirtier that you need to clean up faster, pick up more, more dirt, then the max mode is useful. So I want a longer max mode and I also want the regular mode to be last longer too. In order to remove the original Dyson battery, there are two screws that need to be taken out. One screw is right here in the back of the handle. And there's one screw that's kind of hidden behind the dust bin. So first thing we'll do is just remove the dust bin, pop that down, and then pop it down again to take off the dust bin. Now we can access this screw that's right here. That screw needs to be removed. And this screw back here needs to be removed. This screw won't come all the way out, so you just need to turn it over and try to wiggle that screw out. Then you just have to pull the battery out of the base of the handle. What's interesting about these Dyson batteries is that the trigger is purely mechanical. There's just a, there's just a lever in here, so there's no switch in the actual trigger. The switch is in the battery itself. And so all the electronics, you see when I'm pushing, this is the actual switch that the trigger pushes against. And you can see it's lighting up the blue light indicating it's like applying, giving power. Um, so the, the switch and all the electronics are contained within the battery housing. Therefore, the, the replacement battery needs to have kind of some intelligence too. And so it's got, also has its switch that's inside of the battery housing so although I hear a switch being clicked, like a micro switch, when I'm pushing on this button, um, it's very possible that the power going to the motor itself is, is being switched by some semiconductor devices like solid state relays to be able to handle the motor current. Something I wanted to do is weigh these batteries. I mean, really in use, yes, this is heavier, but not twice as heavy because, you know, there is more than just batteries in here. So let's see exactly how much heavier it is. The original battery in ounces weighs 14.85 ounces. So almost close to a pound. 421 grams. The larger capacity dual battery weighs 25.15 ounces. 713 grams. 
So like I said, it's not quite twice. Here, the original Dyson battery, 14.85. The double capacity battery is 25.15. What's the total weight difference between the two? So this is the total weight of the vacuum cleaner without any accessories with the original battery. We got 45.7 ounces, 2.854 pounds, so 1,295 grams. The weight with the extended battery is 56 ounces, 3.5 pounds, 1,587 grams. I mean, in the hand, yes, it's heavier. I can feel a difference, but you know, it's not gonna affect my vacuuming and it's just gonna make my arm a little bit stronger. Instead of having to lift weights, not that I do that or anything, but uh, I can uh, just add more weight to the vacuum cleaner while I'm vacuuming. Okay, so to put the new battery on the vacuum cleaner body, you just slide it in the handle, and we're gonna put this screw in first here. And you wanna make sure, since these are threading into plastic, you wanna make sure not to try to, not to re-thread, but use the original threaded hole. So what I do is I back it up, and you can hear a little click. Until you hear the click, and then you can slowly screw it in. If you're feeling too much resistance, you're probably re-threading and you may want to try to start again. Um, you shouldn't feel too much resistance. And then we can put the screw into the back here of the handle. Do the same thing, back it up first until you hear a click. There we go. Or feel a click. And then screw that one in. This is on low, and if I do the max, now I'm curious to see how long will this run in max mode. So that's, that's another test I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do. Now we have a double capacity battery. Now it's yet to be seen if this um, battery is actually double the capacity in terms of runtime. Uh, I'm going to do some tests, some runtime tests, and see to compare like what to what the uh, specs are for the original battery. And also, um, I'm later I'm going to do some actual tests on the milliamp hours and compare like are they saying the truth here with the milliamp hours? Because if we look at these two batteries, this one being on the right being the original Dyson, you have it says the rated amp hour is 2100 milliamp hours. They are probably telling the truth. And so this battery pack is probably rated to exactly 2100 milliamp hour, or it's a little bit conservative. So good quality batteries are usually slightly conservative on their ratings. Third party batteries are often very generous on their ratings. When I was shopping around for third party batteries, I saw many single pack batteries that were saying stuff like 4,000, 5,000 milliamp hour. That's not even possible. There aren't any, these use 18650 uh, lithium ion batteries, and there aren't even any batteries that are in that milliamp hour range. Um, the biggest ones are like th around somewhere three in the 3000s milliamp hours, but there's nothing like in the four or 5,000 milliamp hour. And the problem is that the ones that do have a higher capacity don't have the discharge current rating necessary for running this vacuum, which is pretty high current. So if you double up the cells, it's going to half the discharge rating necessary for each cell. So you can get away with a little bit higher capacity cells that have a lower discharge current rating. Um, this, however, this 5,000 milliamp hour means that each cell has to be 2,500 milliamp hours, which is, um, a known capacity of 18650 lithium ion cells and it's within range of you know normal capacities but typically those capacities that are 2500 milliamp hour or larger are often like I said lower current batteries so once I get my discharge set up then I can do some actual testing on this and see what is the exact capacity of this battery and I'm also going to later do some long-term kind of life cycle testing of these batteries and show you how does a third-party battery compare to a original Dyson battery, even in the same um, size, the same single pack size. Okay, I'm gonna report back later on how, this, how well this battery works, but uh, I'm excited, it was only like 
$35 or something for this battery, $30, $40 maybe. So I think that's a pretty good deal. And also it gives me that longer capacity runtime that I wanted. Like I was looking at just purchasing a new Dyson battery, but I wouldn't have gotten the longer capacity runtime. Like I would have still had the same runtime. They don't offer a double capacity battery. You know, if they offered a double capacity battery, I'd probably gone for that. This is the original wall mount for the original Dyson battery. And as you can see, it's much smaller up here than the new battery, the double capacity battery. So that means a different wall mount will have to be used for the double capacity battery in order for you to still be able to use the wall mount charging feature. The cable has to be removed from the back here. This is the charging cable because we're going to reuse the same charging cable. It's a bit difficult to get out of here. Get this one put in. Here's the new wall mount dock. You can see it has a much bigger space on the back for the battery. So the larger battery is going to be able to fit in the back here. First thing we've got to do is run the cable through again like we did before with the other one. So put the charging cable in here. Looks like it snaps in place nicely. And then we're going to run it through the back here. Looks like all the same tolerances. Not a problem to run it through here. It did come up with a bag of new screws. It looks like they use like drywall screws for these screws and some inserts, but I have my own better inserts in here. I have the screw type inserts. So I'm going to leave those in the wall. I'm not going to use this. Put that in one first screw in loosely and then the next screw up top. Yeah, same hole, same alignment. It's all good. There we go. Replacing the wall mount is that easy. Here is the double capacity larger battery fitting into the new wall mount charger. I noticed that it's the clip on is a little bit stronger. I may shave this in here a little bit just to round off that edge where it's clipping onto the front here. Clips on there uh, to make that a little bit easier to take on and off. Because if someone, if someone, this one, if someone just kind of pulls on it, straight out of the wall, it's, it could, uh, could pull the mount away from the wall. It feels much uh, like a much stronger connection, but that's not necessarily a good thing for this purpose. Like you can see someone just jerk, kind of trying, jerking on it and jerking it away from the wall. So I'm going to compare that retention notch on both of these and show you the difference between the retention notches. So this is the original Dyson brand design, and you can see that that retention notch has an, has an angle to it. This is this part right here where my fingernails and I'm talking about. Now if you look at the new version, the new wall mount that's made for the, for the larger battery, you'll see that there's almost no angle there. It's basically a vertical wall where this snap is. So what I can do is I can use a knife to shave, that, shave a little bit of an angle there so it's going to come off of the wall mount easier and maybe round that a little bit so that there's less risk of pulling the whole wall mount away from the wall when someone grabs a vacuum cleaner. It really just needs a light retention. It doesn't need a very strong retention. I'm going to take a, a knife like this and just cut an angle there. I'll show it to you when it's done. Here's a modification I made. It's a little bit chewed up. But you can see it's a ramp now instead of just a wall. And I had to ramp it actually more than I expected. I expected they wouldn't need so shallow of a ramp, but it needed a pretty shallow ramp versus the original Dyson had a steeper ramp. But I think what happens, the original Dyson, um, the, the height of this bump was a little bit lower. So this works really well with this shallow ramp now that I made here with the knife. Now after angling those little retention snaps with the knife, it feels much more like the original uh, Dyson wall mount felt to put it on and remove it. So you just you can just pull and you feel the bump. The bump is definitely re retaining the vacuum cleaner, but it doesn't feel like you're gonna pull it off the wall, nor do you need to lift up that much to remove it. You just kind of pull straight out from the wall and it comes off. <laughs> 